to the Parks and Recreation Committee meeting. Ms. Reyes, would you call roll? Commissioner Porter? Commissioner Casaus? Here. Commissioner Paula? Here. Commissioner Jones? Here. Sabre Smith? Here. Thomas Martin? Jamal Williams? Here. Clyde Davis? Philip Frazee? Here. And Gilbert Salguero? Here. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Madam so everyone Chair. had time to look at the minutes. Yes, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, Mr. Martin sends his apologies. Okay, I thank you. Okay, wonderful. I make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, I have a first and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Okay, the minutes from the October 17th meeting are approved. Let's move to the next item, discussion and recommendation regarding Zoom membership fees. Mr. Lechner. Hey, um, I had sent uh, a, a packet to you all yesterday uh, to review. As, um, the Zoom memberships, we never really had any kind of order, um, any kind of amounts of adults and amounts of children. And it's uh, just an example here. We have a couple memberships I have like seven adults and five children, five adults. Um, a, lo a lot of them are four adults, three children, which um, to me, um, and if you look at a lot of other zoos, um, two adults and, and, then, and then a set amount of children kind of constitutes a family. And crunching the numbers, um, so I do have a proposal here. I don't want to change the prices at all. I think our prices are... Um, pretty affordable here for the area, and they're also very comparable with the zoos that are around us and also in this state. But, um, you know, we do need to kind of have some kind of regulation. Uh, it just, it's, yeah, it's just, um, however many people that, uh, that they want to add to their membership, that's how it's always been historically. So is what we're asking is to keep the prices the exact same, but the family membership for $60 would be for two adults and two children. Um, having the option to add two more adults for $15 per adult, um, up to two adults. And then also, um, if they want to add two more children to it, it would only be $10 more. So they don't really have to purchase another, another $60 membership. Um, so the ones that, uh, that we have now that are four adults and four children, Really, it would just cost them $50 more, so they're saving $10 on that. Um, anything over that, then they would have to purchase two, two additional memberships. Um, so if we did go with what that proposal is, um, with what our current memberships are now, that's the ones who have um, already renewed and ones that we expect to renew uh, just from past history. Um, that would give us an extra $8,000. Um, $8, so that's quite a bit of money that we're actually missing out on, you know, with the, you know, rising food costs and, and the cost of um, expanding certain areas of the zoo. So that's um, kind of what we're asking for here. And then, you know, we do understand too, you know, that there are some people who are coming from Texas, so they might not be able to visit as, as often. Um, so with the two adults and two children, um, uh, within five visits, actually it's exactly five visits, um, that would, uh, uh, they would get their money back. So some people that might have to travel a little bit further, you know, we thought about doing something um, uh, that was like a punch card. Also uh, with the military, um, their families could purchase a punch card where they don't really have like that year time uh, to use it. So as they travel, uh, they'll be able to, to get a punch. So it'd be se uh, $75 for the punch card, which again would be two adults and two children for 10 visits, um, which is $140 value. So they're still getting a lot of value for it. Um, but they wouldn't miss out on a lot of those days that they wouldn't be able to use that membership just because, you know, we are pulling people from Amarillo and Lubbock, you know, which might be a little bit far for them to come as often as the people who are local. Uh, so I have in your packet some of the data there, but if anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Mr. Lechner, the only question I had was uh, regarding the punch card and the, what are your thoughts on the no expiration date? Because I know we kind of discussed that when it came to the pool and that's kind of a problem because they never can get rid of them if things change down the road because there's not an expiration date. So 
would you consider putting, I don't know, 18 months, two years, something on there that it expires at a certain time? Yes, yeah, we did um, actually talk about doing the two years on the punch card, um, but um, is what kept popping up, um, oh, was the military, if they get deployed or something like that, um, they're, you know, they're, uh, they may not actually get to use all of that. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely open to put a time frame on, we just wanna make it fair to um, certain circumstances where they may have a delay in um, No, absolutely, in, in, in. I wanna make it fair too, but I would like to see an expiration uh, date on it. Just, I think it helps the city out in the future. Is the, is the plan for you to maintain the cards or the individuals to maintain the cards? So with the punch cards, um, uh, they would take it with them because there really would be no lost value if, if somebody wants to go and if they want to punch all of them, I mean, they're really you know, missing out on their money. Right, so, so that's um, kind of different than the concern we have with the swimming pool, which is where they maintain the punch cards at the pool. And, and, and we are trying to convert that over at the swimming pool also to where we can get them some c cards and they're gonna be responsible just to take some of that responsibility off us. And um, and we, we would still have a, like a electronic database with that too. That, uh, that's what we're doing with our current membership now. Everything was written on an index card. Um, so we have a digital uh, like database and we're collecting um, email addresses and things like that where we, you know, we do wanna give our members more for their money. So we do wanna give them um, uh, like a newsletter every six months so they know what's going on. If, if we get new animals that come in, you know, maybe they get to come in like a day before it's it's debuted to the public, you know, kind of extra special things like that. Um, also, um, an extra special thing on my next agenda, which I'll get to after this. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. Does anybody have any other recommendations or thoughts? Madam Chair, yes. uh, could it be possible, like on the military, if they would notify you that they have orders and you could freeze their card? I think we could do that I mean, as well. I don't think I'm, we'd go through too many that would require that. True, and, and think, now that George? we're digital too, I mean, it would it would definitely be easy because we could just put it in the computer yeah. where we don't have to flip through cards. Because I know some of them get deployed for 90 days, six months. If we could freeze those months and then react, reopen them when they come back. Sure, sure. And, um, and with the punch card too, I mean, you know, uh, that was just our solution to some of the issues that came up when uh, we talked about it at the zoo. So, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely open to having something else different than the punch card. I just wanted to make sure, I mean, like um, if we do make these changes that, you know, you know we are keeping it fair to, um, to the rest of the community. I guess just out of curiosity, why would you buy a punch card and not just a family membership? Uh, that was because if, um, again, if you lived further away, um, so if you are here in Clovis, you know, coming five gotcha. times in a year is okay. so much easier than having to drive an hour and a half, two hours. Okay. How many current memberships do we have? Um, so current, um, the ones who have already renewed for this year is 96. Um, the ones that we expect to renew just uh, from the past history is 101. So that'd be 197. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. What's Second. your motion? To, to, to approve, approve the new membership proposal. Okay, and so I have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, wonderful. Like it. Okay, next on the agenda is again, Mr. Lechner, you're gonna tell us about the Animal Encounter Program. Yes, yeah, so the Animal Encounter Program, uh, that is a brand new program, one that um, uh, we've never had before. And uh, one of the common, I guess, feedback that I get uh, from, uh, from the guests, I do talk to um, a lot of the guests that come through the zoo, um, and they wish that there was more interaction between the animals. Uh, obviously, that's not 100% safe for a lot of them, um, but we did identify three animals, uh, which was um, a, a draft feeding, which is very common in a lot of zoos across the U.S., actually across the world, um, to go in uh, with the lemurs, actually feed them. It's very little risk i mean they're you know you know the sweetest animals ever um, also the fennec foxes um, so we proposed um that we had um had these three encounters that were option where people can pay an additional fee 
you know, we're looking at $35 per person. It, it's a minimum of two person, two people per tour. But then um, that would, you know, one kind of, kind of give them the option that a lot of people are, are asking for. It's a good opportunity to talk about education. It's a good opportunity to talk about conservation. Um, and also, um, it, it, it would raise more revenue for us to make the changes, you know, that we, I have a long list of things I would like to do with the zoo, um, and this would definitely help where I, I don't have to ask for any more in my budget. We can just get it from the programs that, that we're, we're, we're gonna have at the zoo. Um, I did look at the zoos around us. Um, Amarillo and Roswell do not have any program like this, so since we're already drawing people from those, those areas, um, this would even be a larger draw for them, and for, uh, the $35, that's still the cheapest out of any zoo that is around our, our area. The only one that's cheaper is Kansas City um, by $5, but their encounters are only 15 minutes, and we can allocate 30 minutes per encounter. Um, and it's how we kind of set it up just with our staffing, was we would be able to do it Wednesdays and Saturdays, so this wouldn't be every day. And um, as people would sign up for them, uh, it would already be uh, uh, like ahead of time, so the keepers could kind of their schedule and have things set up um, for that. But we just thought that this would be something really good for the community. Okay, is there any discussion? I'll make a motion for approval. I have a motion, but hold on, I have one question first. Does this increase insurance rates to the city by any amount? Uh, not, not that I'm aware of, Madam Chair. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Wonderful. All right. Next on the agenda, discussion recommendation regarding use agreements, range use agreements for groups. <coughs> Mr. Hooper. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, Y'all all have one. I pr Sorry, I didn't get these to you earlier. We've been st we've been juggling at the last minute to get some of the wordings right and. There may still be a comma or two that we're going to have to change. But basically what we did is, is going off our last one of our last meetings where we agreed that we do youth youth groups at the trap for uh, $5 for trap and skeet, $30 for 100 rounds of sporting clay. Um, archery is going to be a $5 per person per day if it's a sanctioned event. Um, and it just basically covers some of those things. It also just says in for us giving you this discount rate, you will do X, Y, and Z, which basically come down to, hey, you got to clean up after yourselves, police the range. Um, hopefully, we'll have some large groups in, and if they go through, so I was trying to do the math, you go through 10,000 rounds of trap between 50, 60 people. Well, I got to load 10,000 clay targets back up the stairs. Well, I'd much rather those youngsters that have just been shooting run them up and down the stairs and load them um, as opposed to our people. Um, and that's kind of just things. This It's a general thing that they do at the majority of their events they're used to doing this this is nothing out of the new or out of the ordinary so it's just a formalized agreement um, they're one-year terms so we just have the option to adjust every year as needed that way i guess this uh would be 4-h there's a youth american trap there's uh clovis christian school has talked to us about archery some of the other groups that are just out there and about saying hey we want to start doing things we just need to get something in place <clears throat> Something okay. more formalized, yeah. Does anybody have any questions? I have a question. Is this uh, like per per group, user, like per event e e agreement, or is it a... It, it would depend on the event. So if it, if it was a group that was coming out monthly, it would be one agreement would cover the whole year. Okay. If it was a group that just had a special event, one-time event, we could do one for a one-time event also. It might be like Senior Olympics might do one event out there a year. Someone else might do it every month. Some might come out weekly, which is the hope. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. I will make a motion for approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Same sign. Okay. Motion approves. Uh, next on the agenda, discussion and recommendation regarding expenditure of $375,000 of capital outlay 
funds for parks improvements. Mr. Hooper. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I, just to make sure everyone's aware, we kind of had a little bit of a hiccup. We talked in the last meeting about going forward with the uh, playground. Then we found out afterwards, or I found out afterwards, I should have known before, that the grant hadn't been fully executed. So we kind of had to put a hold on everything. Um, it just recently came through, I believe last week, the grant has come through, it's been signed by everyone up and down the chain. So now we have access to where we can start against the money. So I've recontacted the um, the vendor who are extending their discount. So that's kind of where we're at. So we're still going with the same um, manufacturer of equipment. Uh, it's basically it came out to $107,000 for the equipment for both parks, or it came out to 167. Then there's a 67 or $60,000 discount is kind of why we're going with this manufacturer. Um, I've, I've found some install prices right now. I currently have an install price of $60,000 to install it. I'm going to have to get more bids, but I kind of put a hold on that because we were we didn't know if this was the direction we were going because we didn't know if the grant would get in time to still get last month's pricing, <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, but obviously, this is a large enough project. They're going to work with us and give us a few days grace period. Um, the requisition has been put in for this equipment. Now, it's just got to go through the approval process and then to get a Notice of operation, NOO, notice of obligation. I was close. And uh, <laughs> same letters, just different order. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so once we get that, then we can approve it, and everything's kind of rolling forward on it. So that's where we are on the playground for both Ryerson and Green Acres. Ryerson will be a – it'll have a complete play, playground. It'll have a 5 to 12 area and a 2 to 5. They'll have slides, swings. Um, it'll have the rubber mulch. It'll have a cement border around it. <clears throat> Probably going to go with some of the same color themes just because they were a general that we did at Dennis Chavez with some of the purple highlights on some of it, but mostly colors that aren't going to fade in the next 20 years near as bad uh, just to make sure that it stays good looking. Um, Try to go with the same rubber color because I have a feeling we're going to need more, and that way I can go buy bags out of Houston and supply both parks. So just something just just every park will be different, but we won't need enough consistency to where we can some, on some of these things. Uh, like I say, now at Green Acres, it's just going to be the back one, the five, to, the two to five, the smaller kids. Uh, we're going to be putting in a border there, rubber, rubber uh, mulch also. Thank you. <laughs> word, I lost the word again. Um, now, one of the projects we, we talked about and plan on doing is getting rid of the sand at the other green acres so we're going to have to find and get a concrete border around the uh, 5 to 12 which is the larger playground in front and then get the same, some of the sand out there and put rubber mulch in that that'll be on a different project but part of the same under the o same overall umbrella of money um, so right now we're kind of looking at 110 and 60 so we're in the 170, 175 range of what we've kind of committed to on playground. If that kind of tells you where we're at. Now we're, we're at 375 total for the grant, um, which we have received, signed off, all that. Thank you. Started that off. <laughs> Just to cover myself because I need to check on those because I was spending money before I got it actually in my checking account. <laughs> Um, been known to do that around the house too. So, uh, but yeah, it's kind of where we're at and kind of directions we want to go. Now it's, we go back to some of our others is how do we want to start delegating that? Um, I believe we kind of discussed some things at Ryerson, such as the stones, uh, taking some fence out, putting something around the perimeter. Um, still need to get a quote on that. Obviously I just kind of put it on hold since we thought the whole thing was on hold, to be honest. So that's going to kind of come back. Um, we talked about uh, doing some stuff at the skate park. I've gotten some quotes, but again, nothing formalized yet. So n there's a point of I don't know which direction y'all want to go other than what we've already discussed. Tree work at Green Acres, some of the other projects, some lighting at Green Acres, I think, some lighting at the uh, Potter um, in some areas. But even doing some of these things, I think we still have a decent amount of money that up to y'all's discretion. 
So we don't have a list tonight of no, dollar prices? On, okay. And, and Madam Chair, what we wanted to do is really get the playgrounds going, obviously, with the discounted prices just now receiving the grant agreements and get that going. Um, so now that that can get locked into place, then we'll go out and we'll c gather that more information that we previously discussed on the price of things, bring that back basically as a menu, and then uh, start um, – Identifying which projects you would like for us to move forward. I want to make sure we add the bleachers, uh, yeah, some bleachers to Potter, Absolutely. to Beach and Field, as, as well. Uh, does anybody have any other items they want to have priced out for the next meeting? Um, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, <coughs> excuse me. We talked about bleachers and some shade structures. Um, there's a there's a bunch of other um, things that could be done at Potter Park. Excuse me. Um, you know, even the fields um, could use some improvement. They flood out. Um, you know, we make do. Um, I have a couple of gentlemen from the baseball league. Um, they want, they, we saw this on the agenda and wanted to come and speak for Potter Park, uh, Mr. Thomas Geigles and Brandon Floyd. But um, they would like to, as if they were able to, like to speak on. Absolutely. Mr. Gallegos, would you like to start? Uh, well, first of all, uh, with Beach and Field, I understand the, the beautification projects around town. I think that's a great idea. But as far as Beach and we're first hand, we're on hands all the time over there. I think uh, the shade structures would be a big part because within the past two years, we've become part of travel baseball, where we travel to Hobbs, Lubbock, Amarillo, Rio Rancho. And just the things that are different from those areas, I mean, we're, Clovis is right there. We're... I mean, we can we can provide the same things uh, uh, with between uh, the baseball parks that we have in town, with a little bit of uh, like shade structures. We're not too far behind all these other towns that provide great baseball tournaments and good experiences for all our kids too. And I think, uh, yeah, if it's if it, it's within budget, I think I think it's reasonable shade structures. And I don't think that if it's all within reason and budget of the city of Clovis, I think. That'd be a great improvement and would would profit in the long run. We can bring teams from – we could offer tournaments the way Hobbs does and Amarillo and Lubbock and just accommodate the same way as they do for us because we have great times over there too. So okay. the few improvements that we, we're, not far, we're not far from, and if we could do it, I mean, I know we, we could have some, some good tournaments and good turnouts too as well. And also other ways, for instance, something similar to Custom Classic, Halloween House, we do softball, but – baseball with the youth and offer also a feeder program program for our high school you know youth uh, baseball I know I keep them together teach them the basics of baseball and then by the time they get to high school we'll see the see the outcome you know but well, wonderful well thanks for all you do for the youth sounds like you're very involved yeah yeah well I I, yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we gotta do something to keep them out of trouble I understand thank you <laughs> Uh, Mr. Floyd, would you like to say something? Yeah, just to kind of piggyback on what uh, Mr. Gago said, we've both been involved with Little League Baseball, specifically Western uh, at Beecham, Potter Park, if you will, um, all my life, ever since I was his age, probably smaller. Uh, it feels like Beecham has always got the whatever's left over. Um, I know some improvements over the years have been made uh, there, which has been a huge help. Um, to piggyback on what he said, though, by, I think, investing in, in Beecham and able to host these tournaments that he was mentioning, we would be able to stimulate our own economy instead of going to other cities all the time. Um, you know, we can bring in some of those tax dollars to our to our hotels and restaurants and and businesses locally that could help stimulate. And, you know, I know it, it'll be an initial investment uh, by the city, but eventually that'll, by hosting tournaments and stuff, we can recoup some of that cost, I think. So I just wanted to say that piece. Uh, and I think the shade structures are a huge help. Uh, and then the minor league field is, as you guys have already talked about and mentioned, the bleachers are in shambles and, the ground there is unlevel. Um, 
there's some small improvements that can be made uh, within the concession stand, the bathrooms, the press box itself, uh, just to help accommodate when people do come, when we host tournaments and stuff. So, so do you currently host tournaments here? We did host a tournament last summer, uh, a little league tournament where uh, teams from Quay County, Roosevelt County, and Curry County, uh, and we hosted a tournament there. Uh, it was a pretty big turnout. This year, we've been redistricted, so now we will be hosting, well, have the opportunity to be hosting um, teams from Roswell, Artesia, Carlsbad, um, and Roosevelt as well. So uh, we're in a much larger district this year, uh, which will bring in a lot more people if our facilities can can accommodate. Uh, there's a board within Little League that kind of goes around and looks at all the, the facilities within the district and they kind of decide on, you know, what field's in the best shape to host, host these tournaments. Uh, so I think with a little bit of work and, and help from the city, we could certainly be competitive in that, that decision. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. I'm sure I have a question yes. in, in regards to maybe getting some tournaments. And I know that a lot of these communities have complexes where we do not, but we have lots of fields. Granted, they're all over our community. Is that an advantage, disadvantage to us? I mean, I realize that folks like to go to one location. However, we still do have the facilities. They're just um, spread out. Um, Certainly, I, I think, you know, a long time ago, Clovis had several little leagues, which was a mistake, in my opinion. If you look at a lot of these other cities, you know, they have, you know, like Carlsbad, for instance, they consolidated down into, into one little league, uh, which now, you know, right now we currently we have to compete with American, right, uh, to use their fields or you know they don't use our fields we don't use their fields it, it's it's a mess but yeah I think with them being all spread out it's kind of kind of hard but currently as far as Little League goes Beecham we have three fields there that that can accommodate a tournament you know at, whereas American they just have the one you know it's kind of hard to do a do a weekend tournament with several edge groups with just one field so, and, and thank you for that. And so mm -hmm. that kind of goes back to some of our conversation regarding how we utilize our space and trying to figure out and solve the problems with the facilities, the existing facilities that we have into where we could host tournaments and, and realizing, hey, yeah, we may have a league that competes there, but if we're going to have a tournament, we may, or going after tournaments, it's like, folks, we need to utilize all the resources that we have in order to be able to host those tournaments. And it's not, it's not indicative to that one league that they, they don't own that field. We needed to utilize that across the city uh, to make it available for everybody, so. Yeah, I mean, as far as travel ball goes, you know, I think you could easily host a tournament, you know, at Guy Leader. You know, I know it's kind of geared towards uh, slow pitch softball, but we've been to facilities that have that kind of facility as well. Uh, but. You know, you, you rope off a fence for that age division and you bring in a portable mound and, you know, it's it's very feasible to, to do that. Yeah. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. I would like to just add on that has been an issue, the individual user agreements between the different leagues and, you know, we have three different um, baseball leagues. Um, two of them are Little League and then there's another, the travel the U-Trip Travel Ball League and that, that has been an obstacle, or there's a lot of obstacles to be able to consolidate and do something for, you know, the greater good by having all of the, you know, the individual um, parties are, you know, not making it happen. Right. No, I think we're, the city is aware of that, and I think that's kind of on the radar to um, get some user agreements with some of these leagues so that we can best utilize and, and allow for tournaments and, um, you know, some of these leagues and for the city to generate some money. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, I just like got some input. Yes. The bad part about baseball is I love it. I've always done it all my life. But like just what Brandon is saying, years ago, there used to be six divisions here in this area alone, back in Carlsbad and Hobby. They only have just one. That's why those teams are so much more ahead of us because they get to pick everybody. Here we got five different places. And what he says right there is pretty good. If we could unite everything, just like what you was saying, is if we could unite everything together, it would make Clovis stronger in the long run. And we could benefit with more tournaments here, too, because these people would be working together instead of against each other. 
I mean, I've I coached that that's the um, I, actually I was Brandon's coach when he was 12 years old. <laughs> I coached all my life with, with baseball. His dad even, I even coached his dad back in the in the 80s, 70s. I mean, it goes way back where we used to coach, but it's fun where you can put everybody together instead of it, like you're saying it. We got so many facilities that we need to work together, not just one place, two place, three place. Ideally, it's Carlsbad. They got one association over there. They all Little League, and they all play it together. We have three here. That's, that's you know, is that good or bad? It's bad for the kids, actually. Right. We, we're dividing them up. You know, well, this here, 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 here. Let's put it all together. It needs to be. Yeah. We need to. Thank you very much. Do you have anything else? I don't. Okay. Wonderful. Does anybody have any other uh Questions or comments? I, I, had, I had one to follow up with yes. some of this. And I don't know if it's here, Jamal. Okay. Um, and, and I guess the question for when I'm when I'm looking for some of these quotes and stuff, you're saying you're saying shade structures. That's tough. Um, <laughs> could you be any more? I mean, are you talking shade over bleachers? Or are you talking just shade? I mean, I just want to make sure I'm I'm finding the right things. And then what do you? There's different ideas. We've seen some some of the mesh ones. But um, bleachers. Okay. when I, I was thinking over the bleachers in Albuquerque, we went to the Little League State Championship in Albuquerque at um, was a road runner Little League. And they have um, based like metal mm -hmm. canopies, yeah. yeah, canopies over there. And um, I talked to the president out there and he said they put, you know, they're built 20 years ago and they put some paint on them. But they're, you know, they're pretty sturdy and they um you know, they do the job. That's what I was thinking. Okay. And, and I guess the follow-up to that is, in a perfect world, how many are you looking for? Um, I mean, because I... And, you know, just basically um, on the on the field on the end, the T-ball field, you know, was it, Brandon says six. So six. So two, two sets of bleachers at each field. Okay. And that's just, yeah, 20-footers, four rows, five rows. Okay, just making sure we're all speaking the same language before <laughs> when I come back and cool. Yeah, that, that's what we're. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna say we're gonna hold off on the recommendations at this point. If y'all don't but mind us moving forward with, with the, the playground. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Do I do I have a motion to move we, forward? I thought with we already the, did that, right? We had already motioned no, we, that. We did last month. Yeah, we. Um, just making sure it was still. Because yeah. we thought there was changes, and then, like I say, just Friday or Thursday is when we found out there weren't going to be. So we should be good. Then. So And then just, I mean, some other things internally that we've looked at as far as, like, Green Acres, I know that we'll continue trying to make improvements out there. Uh, you know, we started with the adding the additional electricity out there so we could light the park up, and so this may be an opportunity for us to also continue trying to get electricity to additional areas within our park. Um, I know that we're about to uh, start – in the park for the Christmas season. Um, and so it, we'll put some other things together to include it, it, on that as well, including signage at Green Acres. I know we've talked about trying to look at the signage there, the signage at Potter Park, trying to unify that across our parks and what that looks like. This may be an opportunity for that as well. So we'll, we'll put that list together. Okay. I don't see a motion. Sorry. Do you I see have a question? Oh. Yes. Um, once we start collecting the user fee agreement from various teams or players or whatever, can some of that money go towards some of these shade structure or is it speci specified to go somewhere else? It'll go back into our parks fund. And so it, it, it'll be utilized within the budgets of our parks. And so, and just to, to inform the, the committee, we're gonna be reaching out to each one of our end user agreements to get garnish feedback from them on what they think user agreements could look like, what scheduling could look like, what user fees could potentially look like, so that we can gather that input and, and take their considerations in as well uh, when we're trying to, to shape what these user agreements could look like in the future. Because ultimately, um, the City of Clovis, you know, we have fantastic facilities, um, and, but we want them utilized. I mean, it doesn't do our community any good to have facilities sitting there being underutilized um, and tied up to uh, particularly one particular organization if that's the case. And so uh, just trying to afford different opportunities 
Um, that's why we want to look at these user agreements and how they're being structured, as well as expand our programs. I mean, uh, Atari's motivated and, and wants to, to get things going. He's really looking forward to adult dodgeball, which <laughs> I hear you guys are going to have a team. And so, um, <laughs> I mean, it's just trying to figure that all out. And I mean, when we think about our gym space, when we think about Roy Walker and the utilization of that space, you know, right now we play a lot of volleyball. Volleyball's great. Um, but it takes up many nights of the week. And so what could an actual schedule look like in trying to, to put that together? And so those are what we're trying to work our way through. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair, Can I have a follow-up question on the stones for Ryerson. The stones that are currently at Hillcrest that are right there in front of where they're building mm -hmm. the senior center, where are those going to go? Are they going to stay there, or could they be... They will stay there. Yeah, so once the, that project is completed and once the driveways come in, and then obviously the areas where the fencing comes back down, uh, we'll want to block off everywhere except for the new driveway okay. entrances. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. And Ms. Madam Burroughs. Chair, you voted on the playgrounds in August. Okay, the August meeting. so that's good to go. All right, so I think we're done with that item until the next meeting. All right, the next item is updates. We'll start with Mr. Hooper, unless... Do you have more to add to our parks updates? Well, it's just uh, our general maintenance. So we're going from summer and fall, obviously, we're going to go into winter in just a little while. <laughs> uh, we're taking down the, <coughs> the new building we have at Hillcrest, one of the old, uh, I don't know, maintenance, old barns. maintenance barn or whatever, and just a trash barn sitting out there in the middle of the park where we got out of there. Uh, we've done the painting at uh, uh, Potter's where, where they're trying to get the pavilion. Repainted there in the park. We've done uh, Sunset, Sunset, Ryerson, um, out at Pat Sandoval. We pulled down some fencing around the basketball courts, um, some things along those lines. Just going through and starting on our winter project list and things like that. Uh, we do have a lot more. Um, we are going to be. Hmm? You look like about the pickleball courts. Yes, um, we did. The pickleball was started. And we've last got photographs. Week. Could we have the photographs of the pickleball, please? No, where are they? Um, we went and took some today. Okay. They're still going to, I believe, take down the last fencing on it. Then we'll, take, then we'll remove the, the old basketball fencing on the end and get rid of all the old poles. But there is a new that pickleball. Nice. I've received a couple of cards from yeah. people that say thank you. So, <laughs> so from some of our pickleball players, it was really nice. Yes, we've received several thank yous for that. So thank you very much. Looks great. That does look great. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty much it as far as park maintenance goes. What about the teeter totter at that, Sky that's, Leader? That's been pulled. Okay. Yeah, um, right, we, we still don't know about any type of replacement um, or anything else. We just haven't got the price okay. yet. Uh, I think the last one we got was in the four or five thousand range, though. So. Okay. But it, again, that may come back to a discussion of is that one that we need to replace? Right. I just wanted to make sure that for safety reasons for it safety was taken reasons, care yes, of. That, was, that had been pulled. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. I, I have one quick question. I I missed a meeting earlier in the year or whatever, but uh, I still keep thinking about uh, the bathroom up at Ned Houck Park that was blown up on the 4th of July. Uh, what, what, whatever, whatever happened about that? Um, the last I had heard on it, we're still, I think, arguing insurance. basically with the insurance, is they wrote us a... $10,000 check or some ridiculously known <laughs> low number for a $200,000 building. And so I think it's still just going back and fighting with the insurance and saying, no, what, yeah, just till we get that straightened out, nothing's really happening. Okay. Um, it's blocked off. There's one side that's still usable, but the other side's not. So. Okay, anyone and, else? And if I may, Burrows. Madam Chair, members of the Parks Board, uh, we have not received the, we well, received the grant funding, but we haven't received the paperwork to begin work for master planning at Ned Houck and the ADA improvements to that facility. But we did receive the funding. Thank you. All right, Mr. Curry, do you have a recreation update for us? Yes, I do. So we're getting ready to finish up our Youth Basketball League December 3rd. If anyone know of donations or sponsors that can sponsor the youth medals. I think that would be something that I would like to get uh, any kind of feedback on. If you can guys can find any local businesses or anybody who wants to sponsor that. Uh, also, as far as for next year, 
So I have next year scheduled out. I'm looking in January to start adult dodgeball. That should go into another youth basketball league in March. After March, that should end around June, which will take us to summer youth program. The <coughs> summer youth program should take us into August. Roughly around September again, I want to do youth basketball again. I'm looking to do some summer kickball leagues also for adults and kids. And for early August, I'm looking to do adult flag football. The only concerns I have about scheduling more programs for adults and youth is staffing. So when you are hosting multiple programs across different facilities across the city, you're going to need people to run those. So if I have to be at Ray Walker and something's going on at Ray Walker and I have to dedicate my time to that, does the leagues or different things I want to do, do they suffer because I don't have anyone that I could delegate those tasks to? That's something that I have been looking at. Uh, also, just continuing to look at the things that are not being offered here, how can we do a better job of filling those holes and those gaps? Because like Jamal, they're doing a great job with youth baseball. I do not want to take over any program that someone already started and they already have been doing years of time and dedication into that. I want those to stay what they are. But I'm looking for ways to fill in gaps of different things that we can have. For instance, like if you don't want to go and do your travel ball or you want to say, hey, you just maybe an introduction to a couple other sports, how can we as a city offer those things? Because as a, a former athlete, it's great for the kids to get involved in all sports because you never really know what your thing is. You might be really, really good at soccer or baseball, but you get in high school, you might find out you're really a basketball player or you're really a, you know, a football player, you're really a track player or you, you, know, you do cross country. So just being able to get the youth involved into multiple things because it seems like the youth here is that one sport I play, that is a lot of times I'm finding that's the only thing they do. So how can we get everyone incorporated into the different things that we have? Because if I'm going to offer something, I want to be able to send kids that might not have a chance to play baseball or soccer or whatever, give them a gateway to say, hey, well, you know, maybe you can try this or maybe you can try that, and they can send kids my way. So I think at the end of the day, it's all about the kids, and you want that energy to flow around, not just in one area. I think we should do a better job of actually communicating of what we're doing and how we're doing it and just being better communications of what we're looking to do. Uh, just like, for instance, I love that volleyball is happening at Roy Walker. It's great. I want them to continue that. But one of my things is as programs continue to grow at Roy Walker, do I cut my programming? to make sure they can have it, their time they're having, or do I increase my programming and their time gets cut down? So it's one of the things like, how can you find that happy medium to accommodate everyone? So those are the things that me and Russell have been really talking about lately. And I think it's just, it'll come down to just communication and what we think will best serve the community, not just what best serves my need or what best serves someone else's need. It's what be what will be best for everyone collectively. So those are the things we kind of been at. Yes. You got a question? Okay. I'm sorry. I have a question, Tari. Yes. On the sponsorship, this is sponsorship for the children? Yes, it'd be sponsorship for the children. And how much is the sponsorship? It depends on the metals or what you're going to use. Say, for instance, if you're just going to get certificates, it would just be like maybe like the little plaques that they go in. I can print the papers myself. myself. But if you're looking for the actual prints, that would be something different versus if you want to actually get medals for all children. So I was actually looking into some of the local 
business because I want to be able to give money to some of the local businesses versus going out and looking at, say, your Amazon or your different places from other parts. I really would like to keep the money in the community if I can. So I uh, still have to get pricing for that, but I just kind of wanted to put that on a radar because we still have some time for that. Awesome. Are I'll you? Get, look, oh, go ahead. I'll get with you okay. on that. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Are you looking for medals or trophies for the winning team for each division, or are you? So I was actually looking. I was going to do first and second place trophies. Everybody's going to get a participation plaque for everybody to participate, but I did want it to do something special for the teams that actually won their league or their division, just something extra for them. Yeah. No, I think you should. Sounds good. Anybody else have any other questions? Okay. Mr. Lechner, do you have a zoo update for us? I do. I promise this one's shorter than it usually <laughs> <laughs> um, I had to bring it up on my phone. My eyes feel like they're getting worse and worse every year. Um, I have a, a PowerPoint, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Love PowerPoints. Um, so for our next slide, um, we... So we have a single female common marmoset. Um, they do live in family groups. So when I first came here, that was something. Um, I, I've been trying to find a male um, to come and, and live with a female. Uh, we have finally found one. Um, so she's seven, he's five. Um, well, we think it'll work out great. So we will, um, If I mean, if they're going to create a family or it's just... They're just going to be partners. I mean, th th it's still good for their welfare. Um, so we're hoping to pick up this guy from Texas in the next week or two. Uh, we're just waiting on the permits to come in from the state before, um, well, and the, I guess the check to get cut. But, um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're very excited about that. Um, the ZAA conference is coming up at the end of this month, so I'll be going with Russell and with Lisa. So um, to move towards accreditation for the zoo, uh, this is the accreditation <coughs> body that we do want to go with. And um, you have to have a mentor to, to get in um, and belong to this organization. So that is our goal, is to go and find, um, I know Fort Worth is one, San Antonio, Austin Zoo. Um, there's a lot that are kind of close to us. Uh, so when, when we go and then we make those connections with them, um, these are people who might be on the inspection team and things like that that can come to the zoo, can point out things that maybe should be high priority for us to uh, to actually work on to make our um, accreditation stress-free, as stress-free as, as it possibly can. It, it definitely won't be stress-free, but <laughs> we'll make things go a little bit easier and kind of get um, our, our list of things that we really need to get that accreditation. So we're really excited about that. And um, let's see, next, um, we had uh, some filming at the zoo for New Mexico True Tourism. Uh, they were looking for someone who was very passionate uh, about the zoo. Um, so I selected Lisa. She's, you know, been at the zoo for tw uh, for 26 years. Um, that is gonna. It was a joint partnership between the city, the chamber, and Main Street. And the other two areas that they selected was Clovis Sound Studio and the Rail Depot and Rails Restaurant. Um, so we're we're very very excited that they wanted to highlight the zoo uh, for uh, the promotional advertising and things like that. Um, I, I haven't seen any part of it, I, I kind of let Lisa just go with it. So I'm excited to see it just as long as everyone, I mean, uh, just with everyone else to see how it turned out, but I'm sure it'll, it'll be great. And then just a couple other PR events that we had very recently was um, Eastern New Mexico newspaper uh, reached out again. They did um, a Sunday article on the people in the community. Um, so they, uh, they selected me for that. So I hope I highlighted the zoo very well. I think I did. <laughs> Um, also, me and Russell went to the Rotary Club. We did a presentation there about all the programs that we have in the parks and what we have in the zoo. And um, so that was a lot of fun. That was on November 3rd. I made some connections there. Then also Channel 3 News, as a part of PBS, um, came out and they filmed like a, like a five or six minute kind of thing um, about the zoo as well, which gave me the opportunity to talk about the programs that we have at the zoo and kind of get her name out more in the community. And um, that was it, uh, I think, I believe that's all I have. Can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, 
fundraiser that they're going to do for the tiger? Oh, uh, so uh, the fundraiser is actually be put on by a private citizen. Um, she's uh, uh, we've been working with her, me and um, and Claire and Vicky and Megan, and it's going to be on December tenth. So part of that, I, I believe it, some of that has to still get approved through the, the commission. And the only thing uh, uh, that needs to uh, that remains is the uh, waiver of the alcohol. Um, she'd like to have alcohol at the YLB, which is the city on facilities. That's on the agenda for Thursday evening's commission meeting. But the rest of the activities are, are coming together really well. Um, she's going to have activities at the zoo during the day on the 10th, um, all kinds of fun things for, for the youngsters to do. Um, and then in the evening, uh, there'll be a, um, an, a silent auction um, at the YRB and um, music and entertainment and food. So, she's, uh, yeah, we're, tr we're trying to support her in this effort to improve Sooner's habitat. Yeah, so we um, kind of gave her, well, when we got the first quote for the expansion, um, it was 100,000. Uh, the true quote is 239,000. So um, that went up a lot. Um, but she you know, wants to take on the 100,000, which I, I think is great. And she's been doing a lot of work. So yeah, we are supporting her. Um, we have a couple things uh, that we're gonna work on, uh, like a giving tree that's gonna not just benefit sooner, it's gonna benefit all the animals where people can select an ornament that's a certain color, that's a certain price range. And, um, and that's an item that they would purchase for an enrichment item for, for the animals. So that's kind of what on my part I'm trying to help out with. I believe they're doing, she wants to do some dog adoption in the parking lot and so it involves a lot of other organizations in the community that's going to kind of come together for that, too. Well, great. Sounds like there's great things going on at the zoo. And Sooner's going to be happy with this new pad here uh, one of these days. Absolutely and, and he's <laughs> loving this weather, too. He's, <laughs> he's extremely active. All right. Does anyone have anything for the good of the order? Okay, great. Our next meeting will be uh, December, Monday, December 19th at 530, same place. We're adjourned. <laughs>